All right. Nobody's popped in yet, but um, anybody p that does pop in from Facebook or anybody that, you know, watches this on YouTube, because I'm probably going to share this from Facebook to YouTube, um, I guess, whoever pops in. This is a sermon I like. I found this uh, good Baptist pastor. He's at the Victory Baptist Church out of Hanover, Pennsylvania. He's going to be speaking on Jacob's Well. And the message is, whoever pops in, do you have the water that gives eternal life? He's going to be speaking from John chapter 4, um, which speaks about the woman at the well in the Bible, which are like many people today. They have no hope. They're broken. They feel hopeless. They feel pain. They feel hurt. John 3.16, Jesus was speaking of himself, self, also called Yeshua in Hebrew. Jesus said uh, in John 14.6, and John 3.16, Jesus said in John 3.16, For God so loved the world, he gave us his only begotten Son. He was talking about himself, that whoever believes in him, believes in Jesus Christ, Yeshua should not perish, should not be separated from God eternally in a very real hell, with very real demons. I can tell you how real demons are, guys. I've been physically attacked, scratched by him, so on. I've been through multiple horrible demonic experiences over the years. Um... Not really any more other than spiritual attacks, you know, spiritual attacks a lot of us Christians go through, especially now. Jesus said, do not, do not be surprised, you know, that's, well, not, Jesus didn't say that, but the Bible says, do not be surprised in certain passages when these trials or tribulations come our way, okay, guys, because we're like gold going through the fire, and if you know anything about gold, gold is not refined until it goes through the flames, okay, Right now, God's allowing us to be tested. Right now, God is allowing us to be Coming tried. Off. Right, sorry about that, guys. Right now, God is allowing us to be tried, to be tested in the fire. Okay, the Bible says God does not tempt us, okay, but Satan does. The demonic side does. But God lets us go through tests and trials and, um, you know, tribulations, so on. It doesn't mean you're going to go to the hour of judgment, the seven years, the seven years of tribulation or judgment god's wrath on earth for unbelievers not for christian christians but for unbelievers guys okay that means in your regular everyday life you're going to be tried you're going to be tested satan's gonna tempt you as many are daily you see multiple demons working through people globally right now you see all these people killing each other you know like just a article popped up last night on my phone saying a guy killed a guy at mcdonald's all because his fries were cold okay um there's a lot of demonic activity even tightened up even more now so because you know with planet x inbound supposed to be here by September 30th is the actual target date of biblical wormwood planet X to enter into our outer solar system to start perturbing the outer planets. But see, the, it, it's going to join the planet X system, also known as the, the nemesis system, what NASA calls planet nine or the, or the Trappist one system, the biblical wormwood system, the nemesis system. It goes by many diff different names. But it's only one system, okay? And the Planet X system has been here since 2004 to 2007. I found out it actually came in in 2004 when Scott Siom, a Planet X News, actually said it was 2007 when I actually found out, no, I found an object. I don't know if I still have the picture, but I saw a large Planet X system body passing the sun back in 2004, telling me the system came around before 2007 
which was the time frame Scott Sion said Planet X system came in. So we have Biblical Wormwood, Planet X coming in, guys. Um, September, the target date, according to insider Stephen Bendenoon, Israeli News Live, Planet X will come in on September 30th. Okay, the actual Planet X itself, okay, will come in and start perturbing the outer planets. And then as it, in God's timing, when it comes up and makes its way by the sun, it's going to do an arching pass over the sun, which will... Flip Earth's poles, you know, which causes the pole shift, causes three to five hundred foot tsunami waves on all coastlines, and will wipe out, wipe out anything 125 miles from any coastline, guys. Any coastline. That's why I keep telling you guys, get the heck off the coastlines, especially you on the west coast and east coast of the United States. Um, there's a lot going on right now, guys. They're prepping, you know, they're, it matches actually a few of my dreams of. Nuclear catastrophes happening in New York, and that's what soldiers are training for right now in the National Guard. Many of you do not know that. Training in the middle of the night for things such as nuclear bombs going off in New York, so on, so on. They are training the soldiers right now, guys. They're getting prepped as the world is getting prepped for World War Three, Just as the Bible says and you know, that... Ezekiel chapter 38 and 39, it talks about Russia. If you guys want to learn the best about Bible prophecy and Russia and what's going to come with it, look up Jack Van Impe, um, The Coming Russian War. Look him up. He's the best pro prophecy teacher out there, period. He died uh, not too long ago. But if you guys want to find out the best stuff on Russia, look that up. But um, as I said, you know, I'm first posting this here on Facebook, then I'm going to be posting this on YouTube. I'm Brandon Nagley. I see people popping in again today. is now August 7th, Sunday. It is 11.50 a.m., almost noon, in you know, northwest Ohio, USA. And again, I'm going to be showing you a sermon here from um, this pastor from Victory Baptist Church, Hanover, Pennsylvania, which is the state next to me. I like him a lot because he speaks the biblical gospel. He doesn't give you bull crap. He tells you, tells you the truth. He's not like, um, you know, most of these pastors out there that, you know, like Joel Olstein and um, Joyce Meyer, all these, I hate to say these fakes out there that are all about money. Um, and you think, oh, yeah, some of them preach the gospel. But yet, if you're telling people, you know, that there's multiple ways to get to heaven or if your church, church is all about getting rich, okay? There's nothing wrong with Pat. I see people out there all the time, guys, that get mad because past, pastors ask for money, okay? There's a difference. When you have Joel Olstein making millions of dollars telling people it's okay to be homosexual and an atheist to get to heaven, that's false preaching, guys. That's what it, that is. When the Bible stately, clearly states homosexuality is sin. Look at Sodom and Gomorrah. It's some, something that people that choose to live in that lifestyle, yes, choose. And not always you know, by choice. A lot of times it's demonic possession, okay? Pastors do not talk about this, that there are real demons of homosexuality. There's demons of murder. There's demons of hate. There's demons of lust. I see p people popping in and out, maybe because you guys don't want to hear the truth or not. Oh, well. Um, but either way, yes, there are real demons behind these things. Homosexuality is sin, as the Bible says. That, you know, the Bible says a man shall not lie with man, nor a woman with woman, for it is an abomination to the Lord. For those that try to call yourself Christian and want to live that way, guess what? You're not of Christ. So don't call yourself of Christ, guys, okay? Somebody tried to comment on my YouTube channel a few days ago, and you know, because I was calling out a troll. On my YouTube channel, who was attacking me, and they said, Brandon, you're being so judgmental. What is judgmental to, to you guys, okay? What is judgmental for calling out a troll? Calling out truth as it is? Okay, that's truth. That's not judging people. By the way, and by the way, for anybody popping in, there is righteous judgment, okay? You love how people, everybody takes things out of context. Always says, do not judge one another. What they don't understand is, Christians are have a something called... Righteous judgment, guys, where they judge based on sin, not judging the person based on their skin color or their what they look like or their weight, so on. That's judgment, okay? Or racist type of judgment. No, actual um, moral judgment where you can actually judge based if somebody's living in sin, you can call it out as sin, you know, or attacking or trolling you. That's still a sin as well. You can call that out. So there's a lot of hypocrites out there who don't want to speak this truth. So anyways, I'm going to let this video play, guys. Again, this is Pastor... Um, anyway, it's, Vic, it's Vic, yeah, Victory Baptist Church, Hanover, Pennsylvania. I ran into this pastor a few weeks back, okay? And he speaks to biblical truth. Again, I am Brandon Nagley. 
Um, usually I show the signs in the heavens, the planet X system, which is a lot going on, guys. Just to keep you up to date, you know, China and Taiwan, they are, you know, they're going at it right now. China's been shooting missiles over Taiwan um, ever since Nancy purposely, she purposely went over there. Pelosi, you know, uh, de Democratic um, crook. And by the way, there's crooks on all sides for anybody that comes to my channel. I do not back any politicians or politics because the good ones all get killed by the elite or they are silenced. Okay, that's the truth. All these other politicians in there today are nothing more than a distraction. That's what they are. Trump, all these people are nothing but frauds. They're distractions. Many don't even know. Many do, do not know this, that Trump is also related to Hillary Clinton. A little girl came out and found this out through the bloodline, looking to the ancestry of Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton, that they're actually related. They used to hang out together, guys. So don't get caught up in the two-person left and right right and middle paradigm that's a bunch of bs get out of politics stay out of politics they're all corrupted it's all a game that's what it is and the real people that that are speaking truth okay are getting killed or they're getting silenced same with youtube people like me on my third youtube channel when you speak about planet x when you speak about the antichrist and jesus jesus and all in one sentence of course they're going to cut your channel because that's pure truth but yet Anybody that's telling truth gets called a conspiracy theorist, right? A conspiracy theorist was also coined by our own CIA, Central Intelligence Agency, to make anybody look like a crazed, crazed ball that was telling truth. That is the truth. Back in the 50s, they used that in wartime to make anybody telling truth look like a nutcase. Okay, guys, so you see what's happening. You wonder why there's thousands of YouTube channels now gone. You wonder why now everybody's on BitChute.com or other sites like Patreon and so on. Because if you speak the truth, anything against sin, anything against what Facebook does, which, by the way, Facebook was funded. Mark Zuckerberg was funded by our own intelligence agency, okay, to make... Facebook. And what, what is Facebook in reality? Okay, I'll probably get this video marked. It was a spy tool for them to watch us. I mean, they don't even have to look up your information. So many of you are afraid of getting your info stolen. Well, when you put everything online, I hate to say a lot of idiotic people on Facebook like to type in exactly where they're going, exactly what they're doing, minute by minute. Hey, I'm going to the store over here. I'm going here. I'm going to Target today. Guess what? The intelligence agencies are watching everything you guys post, okay? Just like there's psychopaths or stalkers on Facebook, as you guys know. I just had some crazy guy, as I wrote, um, I just wrote this yesterday. He wrote me saying, why, why, why was I talking to his wife, okay? His, his, I think his name was Nate Peary or something like that. I remember I added a woman. Her name was Miss Peary, or it wasn't Miss, it didn't, didn't even say she was married, okay, guys? But he started threatening me out of, out of nowhere, and I forgive this man, you know, I, I don't got nothing wrong against him, I understand if it's his wife, you know, I remember liking her profile picture, but I like everybody's profile pictures, and I heart almost everybody's profile pictures, okay? But he freaked out, and, um... You know, I just blocked the guy and I blocked the woman because there's a lot of people out there that want to try to do others harm, especially a lot of government trolls, a lot of just miserable people that are unhappy that want to try to attack Christians. There's a lot, a lot of demonic possessed and a demonic oppressed people that want to attack Christians. Um, anybody wants to come to my channel pulling some type of government misinformation or bull crap or trolling me on my own channel? Number one, I'm just going to start calling you out, guys, okay? I'm going to call you out and I'm going to block you. Straight as that. I'm not afraid. I'm here to give the, the truth of the gospel of Christ, okay? Whether people agree with me or not on certain things, I can really care less because my life's short, your life's short, and life's about loving and forgiving another. That's what life is about. So, enough of me blabbing. Here is Jacob's well message um, from John chapter 4 from this pastor from Victory Baptist Church, Hanover, Pennsylvania. Okay. Life's short, guys. We got the Planet X system here causing hell, chaos on Earth. Uh, Mike from around the world. Remember I just shared a video not too long ago, guys. If you guys have been watching down my Facebook timeline, a massive asteroid debris came in. They tried to bullcrap everybody, say it, it was all a Chinese rocket. No, some of it was a Chinese rocket. But come to find out, all the other clips I showed were actually meteor, meteor debris. 
um, as they're first coming in clusters from the Planet X system, then, then they're going to start coming in waves, okay? Excuse me, and they're going to hit by the millions in very soon time, in God's time. As Revelation chapter 3, uh, sorry, Revelation chapter 8 talks about the all the asteroids, different asteroids coming from Wormwood, which is Planet X, the brown dwarf star, our twin sun, okay, also called the fiery red dragon of Revelation 12. It talks about the fiery red dragon, which the ancient Chinese also used to call planet, used to call, used to call planet X the red dragon, which is China's country's own symbol, guys, okay, is the dragon chasing the pearl. That's planet X, and it's going to cast one third the stars to earth. Somebody said the stars are fallen angels, baloney crap, okay? A lot of people are trying to put out their own theology, man's ways, man's theologies, man's teaching, okay? Stop going by man's teaching and go by the Bible, go by biblical facts, you know, and look up the best pastor, look up the best Bible prophecy teachers and pastors on YouTube, okay? Because there, there's a lot of fakes out there, there's a lot of fake pastors who are phonies, shouldn't even be pastors that reject the rapture of the church. They reject it, even though it's clearly in there. And just as the word Bible is not found in the Bible, doesn't mean it's not our Bible, right? The word rapture comes from when St. Jerome translated Paul's words caught up to a piamor in the Latin, or raptio, or raptura, or harpazo in the Greek. The actual physical removal of the church, of the body of Christ, of the bride of Christ, same thing. True Christians, those who have personally accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior and follow him and are willing to turn away from sins and loving and forgiving another as God commanded, which, by the way, many are not doing today. Many are living in hate. They're living in all in self-want. They're living in bitterness. you got little, you know, as the Bible says in the end days, um, by the way, that was the full def real definition of the rapture, the actual physical removal of the church, the body of Christ, true Christians, from one place to another, and ecstasy, which was around way before John Darby came out, by the way, for those that like to use that argument, baloney crop. Okay, so if I start coming out with some fiery messages, I'm tired of the fake hood, guys. I'm tired of the bull crap. I'm tired of these lying preachers. I'm tired of the Joel Olsteins. I'm tired of everybody bickering and hating and judging one another, thinking you're better than somebody else. I'm tired of it, okay, because God's love and his mercy and forgiveness. And right now, in this time, it's time to love another. If you have a man or a wife and you're married, you better be treating your man or a woman as a queen or a king. Because some people like me want that love. They seek that love. But I've given up searching here. Because you realize how fake people are. You realize that people don't want true love. They want to hurt you. They want to give false promises. They want to so-and-so. But you know what? Life's about forgiveness. And life's about love. My journey here isn't about me. It's not about myself, guys. I'm not into myself. My, my journey here is to give love, to teach you all that Jesus Christ is love and that God is love is light. Love and light and mercy and forgiveness. God is not hatred. God is not about black and white as the media is pushing. Okay? It's about love and forgiveness. Life's whole meaning is about love. Loving God first and loving your neighbor as yourself. Loving your husband and wives. Men treating your wives as queens. Women treating your husbands as kings. Stop being so introverted out there and holding in your feelings. Okay, that's that's a straight up message to all men and women listening to this. Stop holding in your darn feelings and start actually being romantic and going and doing something for the ones you love. Start telling the people that you love them that you do love them every day and stop just telling it in words but show it by action. Because guess what? The time is extremely short, my friends. The time is so short with Planet X inbound coming in by September. And you wonder why all these government agencies are telling all their friends to get stuff done by September. Hello? Hello? It's time to wake up. Judgment is imminent. The rapture of Christians is imminent. It's time to put away the hatred. It's time to put away the bitterness. It's time to put your guys' bullcrap away. Start making things right with your old friends or old people you may have hurt. Yes, some of you I'm talking to. It's time to love. Purely, with pure heart. It's time to forgive if you got somebody to forgive that you may, might have forgot about, maybe it's time to start asking God to help you remember those you have hurt or those who have hurt you. Forgive and ask for forgiveness. But Jesus said, if you do not, do not forgive, God will not forgive you. Why? Because God is light. He's love. He's forgiveness. He's not black. He's not white. He's not Asian. He's a spirit. 
He's a spirit full of love and grace and mercy. And that's my message to you guys today. Stop taking your life, your loved ones, and your family for granted, granted, and accept Jesus Christ who paid for your sin debt on the cross, being the sacrifice, the intermediate between God and man, spilling his innocent holy blood for all humanity's past, present, and future sins on the cross. He died on the cross, was buried in the tomb, in the garden tomb in Israel, and rose again the third day. That The Bible says that whoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. It just takes faith, guys, as Romans ten thirteen states. It just takes faith. But the question is, do you have faith? And for you tired Christians out there like me, before I start this, sorry, I've I'm, I'm been rambling on a lot, I know. For you that don't want to listen, get off my channel, period. That's not talking to you guys here on Facebook. This is for when I get on, post this on YouTube, okay? For those who do not, do not want truth, do not want to listen, think it's fear porn. You're about to see fear porn. Open your eyes, look outside. The skies are all blood red all around the planet. The water is drying up. It's time to wake up, guys. Time is short. As I was talking about what Insider Mike from around the world said, just a few days back, I was showing the meteor debris that came in. They tried to lie and try to say it was all rocket ship debris. Well, what people don't know is, well, a bunch of chunks came in and took out um, quite a few hundred feet of land, okay? Okay. As I said, clusters are coming in first from the Planet X system. Then you're going to have millions of these hot rocks, big and small, hit all over the planet. I know I've seen in seven fireball dreams from Christ, not including all my other prophecy dreams from Christ, not including everybody else's dreams and visions from Christ. They'll tell you, just as I've had rapture and, well, now I've never had them both together at the same time, rapture and fireball. But they will all tell you, everybody that's had rapture fireball dreams, that when those fireballs come down, we go up. Why? Because Jesus said in Revelation 3.10, he says, Because you have kept the word of my patience, I will also keep you from, the word from, where our Bibles are from, Greek, Aramaic, and Hebrew. Jesus said, I will keep you from the hour of temptation that shall come upon the whole world to try them, to try unbelievers that dwell on the earth. The word from in Greek is E-K, it's ek for those out there that know nothing, nothing of Bible prophecy. Stop going out there cutting down those who want to talk about the rapture of the church when you guys know jack squat yourselves. Yeah, I'm flamed up, I'm fired up because I'm so disgusted with seeing how the church has become. People would rather talk about man-made theologies of their own wishes and own hearts. Jesus didn't come and die on the cross for you guys to go through judgment, no. 1 Thessalonians 5, 9. By the way, Revelation 3, 10, Jesus said, Because you have kept the word of my patience, I will also keep you from, ek in Greek, will keep you from out of the hour, hour of trial, temptation, testing which is the seven years of judgment that should come upon the whole world to try them. Who's them? The unbelievers, those that reject Christ now and at the time of the rapture. It shall come upon the whole world to try them, unbelievers that rejected Christ, to come upon the whole world to try them to dwell on the earth. Revelation twelve five: the child is caught up. Rapia more in Latin, raptio, harpazo in Greek, rapsora in Latin. The physical removal of the church from one place to another in ecstasy, by full definition. The removal of the body of Christ, the bride of Christ. Christians, true believers that have accepted and followed Christ as Lord. The child is caught up, raptured, harpazo in the Greek, removed. Before the dragon gets the child, Revelation 12, 5. 1 Thessalonians 5, 9 states this. For God, notice how the post-tribulation people that believe you're going to go through judgment. Um, and many of them believe that because they'll tell you due to the fact that they think you must be cleansed again from sin. Baloney crap, guys. Jesus Christ died on, died on the cross for our sins one time. Not two times, not three, once. To pay for all our sins. When you come to Jesus Christ, Yeshua as Lord, to accept him as Lord, our sins are forgiven. When you come to Jesus Christ, Yeshua, to ask him for forgiveness of sins and to accept him as Lord. First Thessalonians 5, 9. 
It says, for God has not, notice that, not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation in Christ Jesus. Yes, truth needs told, and I'm speaking it. You guys don't like the truth? Don't watch it. We're in, we're in serious times right now, guys. It's time to get together with your families, those you love. Stop taking your life and your loved ones for granted. Stop holding on to stupid fantasies, half of you, right? Stuck in your fantasy world. If you, if you can't get something, move on, move past it. Follow God's will, not your own wants, not your own desires and lust. That's your bitterness and hatred. God is so loving and merciful. And I'll tell you by all the hundreds upon hundreds of death experiences I've listened to. People clinically brain and heart death. It's clinical death when your brain goes, not just your heart. And people actually go down into hell and get saved out of hell by Christ. And then get brought up to heaven to see both heaven and hell. Or just get saved out of hell and see Jesus, you know, or actually just go straight to heaven. Heaven NDEs, near-death experiences. Anybody can look this up on YouTube. And people will talk about, every one of them, how much God loves us. And how much God is love and that you can physically see his love pouring into you when you stand in front of Christ. Because guess what? Jesus Christ said, me and my father are one. If you would have known me, you would have known my father also. For those that like to say Jesus Christ is not God in the flesh. The Bible says for those that say Christ is not God in the flesh is an antichrist, okay? It doesn't mean they're the biblical antichrist that's going to rule on this earth when Christians are raptured, caught out, pretending to be God when he's not going to be God. He's going to be the antichrist playing a false God role. The Bible says those are antichrists, and there are, there are many, as the Bible states, that reject Jesus ever came in the flesh. Jesus wasn't just the Son of God. He was God in the flesh. And now you're, now you're about to find out he's also the water of life. And I leave my message with you, with you all today. Romans 10, 13, whoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Um, with this video, I'm going to put the salvation prayer, say it. Believe it in your heart. Accept Christ as Lord before late. It's not the prayer that saves you guys. It's based off of Romans 10, 9 to 10 and 13. That who so, that um if you if if you shall confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and shall believe in your heart that God has raised Jesus from the dead, you shall be saved. For with the mouth confession is made to salvation, and with the heart one or man believes unto righteousness. Romans ten thirteen states, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. But it just takes faith. But the question is to my listeners, do you guys even have an inch of faith? I'm going to let the video start, guys. God bless. Enjoy the video. Here we go. Hopefully, if, if you guys can't hear me, can not hear the video, please type and let me know. And so, John chapter number four, very familiar passage of scripture this morning. We're going to talk about... Oh, hold on, hold on, guys. I got to connect the um, Bluetooth. Hold on, guys. One second.
All right, guys, sorry about that. I am back. Give me one second. I'm trying to connect this video, if you guys can hear me, to a to a Bluetooth, actually, so you guys can hear it. Hold on. Powering on. Ready to pair. Okay, hold on. Paired. Some, some fun stuff, and so we'll have a good time. Come back tonight, 6 o'clock. Let me know uh, if, if you guys can hear this, today, by the way, okay? There to John Maximum volume. Uh, if you're a visitor today, uh, we certainly would like to hear from you. We had some visitors in the 8.30 service, and, and uh, uh, certainly uh, we have some visitors here today. You're visiting with us. Uh, we'd like to know who you are and, um, you know, just to connect with you. Uh, you can do that there in the bulletin. There's several different ways you can connect with us. You can stop by the Welcome Center after church, grab one of those welcome packets, and uh, an attendant there at the Welcome Center will show you how to fill that out. That comes right to me. I just say a prayer for your family and I will uh, send you a little card and can you guys hear this pretty good or no and Danny Danny Bell, Bell uh, view can you hear this right now pretty good can you hear the pastor speaking or no uh, just if you want to if you want to meet with me you want to talk about the church and have questions that's fine if you don't that's fine too I, you know uh, we're just here to be a blessing to you in your walk with the Lord Jesus Christ and so John chapter number four, very familiar passage of scripture this morning. We're going to talk about uh, the um, uh, Jacob's well this morning, Jacob's well. Of course, at this well, some pretty interesting things happen. There's a lot of firsts that happen here, a lot of prophecy fulfilled here, a lot of amazing things that from the Old Testament over 2,000 years come alive right here at this well in John chapter number 4. It's some, uh, some amazing Bible truths, and I, I hope it would be a blessing to you. Uh, we're going to read um, several verses here. We're not going to read the whole chapter, but just a, a good little clip of it. Uh, but in John chapter number 4, verse number 3, let's pray, and then we'll get into uh, this passage of Scripture. Father, we love you. We ask for your blessing. We ask that you would speak to hearts. We ask, Lord, for your strength. Father, I cannot speak unless you come and give me your strength. Father, I thank you for this place. I thank you for these people. I thank you for the work that you've entrusted us to do. We're trying to get your gospel out. We're trying to win souls and disciple them and teach them. And God, we're trying to be a blessing to one another in this walk. God, help us to live by faith and do that. God, I pray that you would uh, create your heart in us today. And Lord, I pray that if there's somebody here that doesn't know you as their personal Savior, today would be the day that they trust you. God, give us clarity of mind. Let us be able to articulate what we've studied. Lord, we love you in Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat> Verse number three. The Bible says he, meaning Jesus, left Judea and departed again into Galilee. Now, <clears throat> understand where he is and where he's going. Jesus is in the southern part of of what we call the land of Canaan. So when you look at Israel, what we call no, Israel, and we look at the promised land and how it stretches out there across the Mediterranean Sea, up along that sea coast, Judea is in the south, and he's headed north to Galilee, uh, where he will uh, start his Galilean ministry. Uh, obviously, the place where uh, he was born, his nativity, Nazareth, Bethlehem, all that. He, he's traveling north and he's going there. Uh, the Bible says he's leaving the south. He's headed north because that's where all saved people end up, right? <clears throat> they leave the south, Brother Tony, and they head north, right? That's what... <laughs> Anyhow, so, so this is where Jesus is going. Now, the Bible says in verse 4, he must needs go through Samaria. Now, there's no Jew alive at this time that would have anything that they would ever have to go through Samaria for. In fact, there was a major trade route that went from north to south directly through Samaria that had been used for thousands of years, this trade route. And, and when the Jews would travel north to south, they would either go east and go out over the Jordan River, up around Samaria and back over and then up, or they would go uh, west, head all the way out to the sea coast at the Mediterranean, go up and around and get back on the, on the route. And I'm going to tell you a little bit about that in just a minute. But they avoided this place like the plague. But Jesus said, 
I have to go through. I must go through this place. Verse 5. Then cometh he to a city of Samaria, which is called Sychar. The Bible says that Samaria would be the, the state or the, the entire area, and Sychar was this city that is here. Now, in the Old Testament, this was called Shechem, okay? This is the place called Shechem, and I'm going to tell you about that in just a minute and why that's so important. So they come to Sychar, which is, uh, which is Shechem, near to the parcel of ground that Jacob gave to his son Joseph. Very important. Verse 6, now Jacob's well was there. Jesus, therefore, being wearied with his journey, sat thus on the well, and it was about the sixth hour. The Bible says, as he's traveling north to south, and so where he was in Judea to this place where they are in Sychar, where uh, Jacob's well is, is about 20 to 30 miles. Depends on exactly where he was at. But can you imagine traveling 20 to 30 miles in that heat, in that desert climate? I mean, after a while, you're going to want some water, right? You're going to want something to drink. Jesus comes and literally sits on this well. And the Bible says the story is about to unfold. Then, in verse number 7, there cometh a woman of Samaria to draw water. Jesus saith unto her, give me to drink. For his disciples were gone away into the city to buy meat. Now, this is very important. The Bible is going to show us a time frame. There's a time frame here. And it, it all has to deal with this woman, her life, her present, her past, and everything. Because the, the, the hour that they come, the Bible says the sixth hour is from 9 a.m. to 12 noon. So any time in that time frame. Well, typically, the ladies of the town would go out in the cool of the morning to go get their water. Now, the Bible says this woman was coming at noon. Why do you know that it's at noon? Well, the Bible says that his disciples at verse number 8 went into the city to go buy food. So they was headed to Chick-fil-A at lunchtime. Right? They, they were getting the grilled chicken, right? They were getting no bread, everything healthy, right? But anyhow, so, so, it was, so we know it's about noon-ish. So she's coming in the heat of the day when no one else would be there. This woman, watch this, her life, her past, who she is, what she's dealing with in her heart, what she's dealing with in her mind, says this, I don't want to be around anybody. You ever get to that place in life where you say, I don't want to be around anybody? I don't want to answer any questions. I, I, I don't want to be asked about my life. I don't want to be just, you know what, just leave me alone. And that's where this woman was, and that's where she was living. So she comes to this place at that time. The Bible says in verse number 7, Then saith the woman of Samaria unto him, How is it that thou, being a Jew, asketh drink of me, which am a woman of Samaria? For the Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans. We'll explain that phrase in just a minute. Jesus answered and said unto her, If thou knewest the gift of God, and who it was, or who it is that saith to thee, Give me to drink, thou would have asked uh, him, and he would have given thee living water. So Jesus says, Lady, if you, if you knew who I was, if you knew who was asking you for a drink, you'd be asking me for a drink, and I would give you living water. Verse 11, the woman saith unto him, Sir, thou hast nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. About 120 feet deep, actually, this well. Cut down through the limestone, 120 feet, giving fresh water. This well is deep. You, you don't even have nothing to draw with. You don't have a bucket. You don't have nothing. How could you, in verse 11, give me that living water? The Bible says, verse number 12, Art thou greater than our father Jacob, which gave us the well? And drank thereof himself, and his children, and his cattle. Jesus answered and saith unto her, Whosoever drinketh of this water shall thirst again. But whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. But the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water, springing up into everlasting life. Jesus said, ma'am, you, you don't get it. Uh, you're going to come back here tomorrow and you'll be drinking water again because this water is going to cost you to thirst again. If you drink the water that I give you, listen, he said the well moves from the outside and comes to the inside and now you have living water all the time and you'll never thirst again. 
This woman, with all that was going on in her life, is intrigued. And she says in verse number 15 to him, Sir, give me this water that I thirst not, neither come hither to draw. I want something that is more than I have now. I want something that's eternal. I, I want something that's going to satisfy me. So, before she can get this satisfaction, before she can move into this new chapter of her life, watch what Jesus says. Okay. Uh, verse 16. Go call thy husband and come hither. So, he was being proper. Okay. I, go get your husband. We're going to talk about this together. Verse 17. The woman answered and said, I have no husband. Jesus said unto her, Thou hast said, Well, I have no husband, for thou hast had five husbands. Notice the word had in verse 8. She had, past tense, five husbands. So she has been married, divorced five times. Verse number 18. And he whom thou now hast, present tense, the person you're shacked up with, living with, outside of marriage. Watch this. Not only is Jesus confronting her past sins of adultery, but now her present sin of fornication. Watch this. The Bible says, now he's not even your husband. In that thou hast, thou said truly. Here's what he says. He's confronting her sin. Listen very carefully. Before this woman is going to move from her current state of emptiness and brokenness and destitution, before she can come into this place, they got to deal with sin. Listen very carefully. Listen, if we're ever going to get anywhere in life and do anything good, we got to deal with sin first. Sin is killing our country. Sin is killing our home. Sin is killing marriages. Sin is killing boys and girls. Sin is killing our teenagers. Sin is killing our younger adults. Listen, sin is killing everybody. And before we get that well, move from the outside to the inside, and before we become more for the Lord Jesus Christ and have anything eternal, we got to deal with the sin that's in our life. And here's what the woman, watch this. Just like a normal person, watch. as soon as she's confronted with her sin, with something she doesn't like, verse 19, she starts changing the subject, and she gets all religious and cheche. Watch, verse number 19. The woman said unto him, Sir, I perceive that thou art a prophet. I perceive that thou... I, woo, woo, man. I perceive. Right away, she's getting spiritual, right? Like she's got some kind of, like, oh, oh, I perceive, Right? That thou art a prophet. And, and, and now she's getting spiritual. She's moving attention away from herself. And now she, like, like she has this spiritual sensory about her. And she says, I perceive thou art a prophet. Verse 20. Our fathers. Now she talks traditionally about her, her family, her heritage. Says our fathers worshipped in this mountain. And I'll tell you about that in just a minute. And, and ye say that in Jerusalem is the place where men ought to worship. So us as the Samaritans, we're worshipping here. Uh, Mount Gerizim, uh, between Mount Ebal and Mount Gerizim. We're, we're worshipping here. This is where our temple is. And, and, and you, you in Jews, you say in Jerusalem, that's where you ought to worship. So right away, just like somebody, you're, you're witnessing to somebody at work, you're witnessing to somebody, you're trying to tell them about Jesus, you're trying to tell them about, uh, you know, salvation, and right away, right away they're like, yeah, well, where did Cain get his wife? Right? Or, or they whip out the other Bible verse that they, that they know about, judge not, lest ye be judged. Right? Right? Isn't that what people do? What are they doing? They're, they're totally diverting all of the attention away from themselves. Let me give you a little bit of spirituality that I heard about so we can totally change the subject. Jesus isn't fooled. And here, watch this. Watch what he says. Our fathers worshiped in this mountain, and ye say Jerusalem's the place we ought to worship. But verse 21, Jesus said unto her, Woman, believe me. The hour cometh when ye shall neither in this mountain nor yet at Jerusalem worship the Father. Ye worship, ye know not what. He says, you don't even know who and what you're praying to. Watch this. We know, meaning the Jews, what we worship for salvation is of the Jews. Or the Savior, the Messiah, will come from the Jews to the world. But the hour cometh, and now is, he says, right here, when the true worshiper... Shall, call, shall worship the Father in, watch this, spirit and truth. 
Now watch this. For the, for the Father seeketh such to worship Him. God wants people to worship Him in spirit and in truth. Verse 24, this is why. Because God is a spirit. God is not walls, plaster, stone, concrete, paint. God is not gold, silver, brass, and fine jewels. He's not a statue that you pray to. He, he's not an idea. He, he's, not a, he's not a presence. Listen, God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him. Watch, again, in spirit and in truth. In spirit and in truth. See, her focus was on the place. Her focus was on her family tradition. Her focus was on religion. Her focus was on people being my people group say this. Your people group say this. Your culture says this. My culture says this. My ethnic background leads me here. Your ethnic background leads you here. And Jesus says, you know what? The relationship that I'm talking about, it, it goes deeper than a place. It goes deeper than a people. It goes deeper than a tribe. It goes deeper than your race. It goes deeper than your language. He said it is spirit and it is truth. Listen, my friend, God does not want somebody to offer up prayers in a building. Listen, He wants people to offer up prayers from their heart to Him. Amen? That's what he's looking for. He's not looking for your religious exercises. He's not looking for lighting candles and rubbing beads and being a good person and giving your money and doing all that stuff, getting baptized. Some of that stuff is good in its place. But my friend, listen, what Christ wants more than a religion is a relationship with his son, Jesus Christ. And that's what Christ is standing in front of this woman. And watch what she says. In verse 25, the woman said unto him, I know that Messiah cometh. You see that? I know Messiah is coming, which is called Christ. When he is come, he will tell us all things. Jesus saith unto her, <laughs> I that speak unto thee am he. You know what Jesus just did? He revealed this, pl this place right here. Whew. What's happening in this place? has never happened before. This, this place, this woman, is standing face to face with the Messiah, Jesus Christ. And here in this message today, when we're talking about Jacob's well, listen, water is essential. Yes, we're talking about water. It, it, it all circles around this well. It all circles around life. You know, they say that our bodies are made predominantly of water. You know that? Our earth is made predominantly of water. In fact, whenever God created the heavens and the earth, Genesis 1, 1 and 1, 2, the Bible says that everything used to be covered with water all at one spot. Listen, so from Genesis is 1 2 all the way to Revelations 22 17 when Jesus said anyone that's thirsty let him come and drink of me freely all throughout scripture water is important to life water is the picture of salvation water is the picture of this this satisfaction this quench of thirst not just physically but spiritually Water is essential to life. Our body's made of water. Wouldn't it be nice if we could just like put a tap in somewhere and drain off some water and lose like 40 pounds? That'd be great, right? I mean, that'd be easy. I mean, why can't we do that, right? But you can't. Water is essential to life. Without water, we die. Without water, without, without that, that water inside of us physically, we die, and we worry about that stuff. We stress about life. We stress about what I have and what I need, and I need this, and I need that, and I need this, and I need that. But here, what Christ is saying is, no, no, no. Out of all the stuff you need, you need me. Out of all that you, you need, before you need physical water, you need this spiritual water. I heard about a story about this, these two guys that were shipwrecked on this island. And man, they're so worried. They, they, they get off the island, or the, the, the boat is shipwrecked, and these two that are left, and they're out here. And the, the one guy, man, he's going crazy. He's like, we're going to die, we're going to die. You know, we're out of water, we're out of food, we don't have nothing. And the other guy, he just goes, sits up against a palm tree. He's just relaxing. And that, that one guy, he said, man, I don't know why you're not so worried about all of this. You don't understand. We don't have no water. We're going to die. And the guy just kind of leaning back. He just looks up. He said, you don't understand. I make $100,000 a week. 
I ain't worried about this. And he goes back to sleep. And the guy's like, who cares about your $100,000 a week? You ain't getting $100,000 a week here. And we ain't got no water. You're going to die. And the guy leaning back up there, he said, you don't understand. I make $100,000 a week. I tied 10% of that to my church. My pastor will find me. I'm not worried at all. And goes back out. Right? L -l listen, listen. Some people think money is what it takes to have satisfaction. Other people, it's the physical things like water. Other people, it's like possessions. Other people, it's like treasures laid up in stocks and bonds and all of these things and possessions. My friend, listen, more than the physical things, we need the water of life. And this well right here stands in the middle of, of the world and history and the picture of the Bible as God's way of saying what you need is what I have. First, let me, let me look at a couple of things just real quick. Number one, let's look at the well. I, we need to look at the well and learn a little bit about the well. Why is this well so important? Well, who did it belong to? The Bible says in verse number six that it was Jacob's well, right? Verse number six says Jacob's well was there. So why is this so important? Jacob's well. In fact, it gives us in verse five the location of this well. The Bible says that it was in Sychar or Shechem near the parcel of ground that Jacob gave to his son Joseph. So how did this thing get in the family? Well, just real quick, and we're not going to turn to all these <clears throat> scriptures, but we're learning in, uh, on Wednesday nights, uh, we're going through the book of uh, Hebrews, uh, we're in chapter number 11, we're going through chapter number 11, talking about living by faith. And so uh, we're talking about Abraham and how that... Abraham was the father of the Jewish people. Well, after God calls Abraham out of his land, Abraham leaves. He goes to Shechem and builds an altar there in uh, Genesis chapter 12, verse 6 and 7. He builds an altar there unto the Lord and makes a commitment to God that, that I'm going to serve you and I'm going to follow after you. And God makes a commitment. Don't miss this. God makes a commitment to Abraham and says, Abraham, I'm going to bless you. I'm going to bless your children. I'm going to multiply your children like the sands of the sea and the, sky, the stars in the sky. And from you, all the families of the earth will be blessed. Now, that was a messianic prophecy that God said, Abraham, the Messiah is going to come through you. That's how his seed, his children, were going to bless the whole world was because Messiah, Jesus, would come from Abraham. Here at Shechem, God makes that promise. Then we see 185 years later, his grandson Jacob comes on the scene. And when God is dealing with Jacob about what he's going to do with him, Jacob is in this place. Genesis chapter number 33, the Bible says in verse 18, 19, and 20, that, that Jacob builds an altar to the Lord there in Shechem at this same place. He digs a well. He buys a piece of land and is starting to raise his family. That's what the Bible says right here, that Jacob drank from it, his children drank from it, his cattle drank from it. So here's what we're learning. We're learning that this is a place where God has dealt with his people. This has been a place that God has, has comforted his people, made promises with his people. In fact, that in, uh, after Jacob was around, about 300 years after Jacob, when the children of Israel are in the, uh, in the, in the promised land, they're coming through, and in Joshua, the book of Joshua, uh, they're getting ready to conquer the land, and, and now they're taking possessions of the promised land that God promised to Abraham many years ago. Now they're getting all these promises. The Bible says in Joshua that Joshua completes a, a, a promise that he made to his predecessor Moses, and the promise was this, that God said in Deuteronomy 11, when you enter into the promised land, and when I have given you all the land, I want you in this place, exactly this place, in Shechem, which is between Mount Gerizim, which is the Mount of Blessing, and between Mount Ebal, which was the Mount of Curse, he said in between these two mountains, this valley, is the city of Shechem. There, he said, I want you to raise up a monument, a stone, plaster that stone, write the law on that stone and the covenant that I'm making with you so that my children will always know while they're living in this land of promise, I'm the one that gave it to them. 
I gave them their promise, and I have been the source, the well, of all of their blessings. And of course, that place Shechem dwelt right in between a blessing and a curse. And so now we come to this place, Shechem, where the bones of Joseph are buried. The Bible says in, in Joshua chapter number 24, at the very end, the very last couple of verses, whenever Joseph was died in Egypt, he, he said, promise me that when I leave, when you all leave, when God completes his promise and gets us out of here, I want you to take my bones with me and bury them in our new land. And here's what we see there in Shechem. We see, you see the bones of Joseph buried, which his tomb is there to this day. I think the modern city is, is Nabulus. Uh, I don't know if you guys have ever been over around Nabulus uh, there, but, but that's the modern city that's there. But in that place is Joseph's tomb and Jacob's well. And in that place, now watch this. So it's a place historically, historically, where the Jews have met with God. A place historically where God has done some amazing things and made some promises, and God's people have made promises of this covenant. But now watch this. Don't miss this. Remember that promise that God made to Abraham? That God said, I'm going to send the Messiah your way. I'm going to send the Messiah to you. Now watch this. After that promise, 1950 years later, almost 2,000 years after God made the promise to Abraham, here comes Jesus to this day and sits on that well and introduces himself to this woman as the Messiah. Now watch this. Jesus had been known as the Messiah previously. Remember at his birth, the Bible says the angels made the, made the proclamation, for unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. The angels recognized Jesus as the Christ. We, we, Simeon and Anna, there in the temple, recognized Jesus as, as the Christ. John the Baptist said, hey, here comes Jesus, the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. But this is the first time in Scripture that Jesus himself says with his lips, I am the Messiah. And he didn't make this proclamation in the temple to all the religious uppity-ups and muckety-mucks. He didn't make this proclamation, right, on the Independent Fundamental Baptist Facebook page. And here, here let, me, let me make this announcement as to who I am. Jesus comes on the scene and makes this announcement to a broken sinful outcast who she even said no Jew wants anything to do with us at this well this place God was saying I keep my promises and although it took almost 2,000 years to complete God will complete it I have people all the time that say preacher do you really believe that Jesus is coming back and I say I really believe that Jesus is coming back well you say it was like 2,000 years ago that Jesus died on the cross and rose from the dead and went back to heaven and said he's coming back. Yeah, it's been 2,000 years ago, but he said it, so he's coming back. Amen? I believe that my God keeps his word. Amen? And here's what we see. God keeping his word. This place. Today, you could go to that well where Jesus sat on the well. And you can draw water from 120 feet deep down and drink of that cool water today. Why? Because Christ keeps his promises. And long after that water would dry up, listen, I don't know if it would dry up or not. I don't know if it would be here till Jesus comes. No idea. But here's what I do know. I know that Christ was saying to this woman, what you need isn't down in that well. What you need is sitting on the well right here in front of you. You need this water. This well, Jesus is saying, needs to come into you and from the inside, not the outside, not drawing water from the outside, putting water in. No, from the inside, you need to have me inside. And then the well of water will spring up inside of you. This well is a place. It was a public place. The Bible says that uh, J uh, Jacob gave it to those people. So publicly, their family, their friends, their neighbors have been using this well for, for almost 2,000 years. It was an abundant well, but historically it was a place where God dealt with his people. The second thing I want to look at is, is the water. Now, look carefully at the water. 
Jesus says in verse number 13 and 14, look, look closely. Jesus said, Whosoever drink of this water shall thirst again. But whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. But the water that I shall give him shall spring up in him a well of water springing up unto everlasting life. So Jesus is saying this. I don't want to just give you a drink. I want to put the well inside of you so that you always have water. Look at this well. Number one, it's a providing well or a provided well, a well that had been given to them. The Bible says in verse number 14, look at 14. Jesus said, I will give him this water. If you ask, I'll give it to you. That means it's a gift. Salvation is a gift of God. The water that Christ has for us today is a gift. I'm glad I don't have to buy it. Amen? I'm glad hey, I don't have to answer some bunch of trivia questions to get it. Amen? I'd probably mess up. If I ever went on that show, are you smarter than a fifth grader? I'd be like, no, I'm dumber than a fifth grader. You know what I mean? Listen, I... It is not the smarts. It is not the money. I don't have to travel to Jerusalem today and go into that, that place of, of Sychar. I don't have to draw from that well and drink that well. I may never touch that well with my lips, but bless God, listen, that water is freely given to us. The Bible says, Jesus said it's a gift. In verse number 10, in verse number 10, the Bible says, if you would ask, I would give it. My friend, what you need today has already been provided for you in Christ. Not only is it a provided water, but watch this. It's a pleasing water. Verse number 14 says you'll never thirst again. It will bring a satisfaction to you. This woman was looking for something. She couldn't find it in six different guys that she had been with. Now, I don't know the cause of her relationship failures. I don't know. But here's what I do know. Nobody in town wanted to be with her. Nobody in town wanted to be around her. She feels like an excommunicated individual. She's a person that just would rather be staying by herself. She's looking for something. She's looking for some kind of joy. She's looking for some kind of acceptance. She's looking for some kind of release from, from all of her pain, her guilt. I mean, she's looking for something. And what I'm saying to you, in this world, listen, sin hurts. Sin destroys. I have, I have dealt with some people that sin has literally ripped their lives apart, shaken it upside down, and threw them out like a bunch of dice on a Yahtzee table. I'm telling you, listen, sin will destroy you. It will also leave you empty. It will leave you questioning. Maybe you're here today and you say, Preacher, I don't know what I need. I don't know what's going on in my life. I don't, I don't know the direction. Listen, God gives a water that pleases. Amen? Hey, listen, before I got saved, I looked for joy and satisfaction and completion and acceptance in a lot of different areas of this life. And the devil's got it over here in this bottle. He's got it out there in that pill. He's got it over there with this group of people and with that group of people. And if I do this, I'll be accepted. And if I look like this, I'll be accepted. And if I change my appearance to look like this, I'll be accepted. And the world is pulling people in so many different ways. And Jesus says, hey, you come drink of this water and I'll satisfy your longings forever. Amen. How many of you today say I'm saved and I'm happy about that thing? Amen. Okay, just making sure because the look on your faces didn't look like anybody was saved up in here. Amen. Wow, there you go. Okay. It's a pleasing water. It's a personal water. The Bible says in verse number 14, I, it shall be given to him personally. Not just publicly, but personally. Christ wants to deal with you personally. Yes, he wants to save your family. Yes, he wants to do something in your marriage. Yes, he wants to do something with your kids. Yes, he wants to do something with this church. And yes, he wants to do something with our community. But he wants to do something with you personally. He wants to deal with you. It's a productive water. Look at what the Bible says in verse 14. It springs up. In fact, the word springing is a continuous action verb. It means to spring and keep on springing. <laughs> it, it, it's kind of like, you know, when old Jethro struck oil. <laughs> and you know, Beverly Hillbillies, huh? You know, let me tell you about a story about a man named Jeb. Poor Mountaineer, barely kept his family fed. Huh? Come on, don't make me sing the song. You know what I'm talking about? Say amen. Okay, I grew up Beverly Hillbillies and Andy Griffith and all that. But anyhow, and he, up from the ground come a bubbling crude, Right? And that's exactly what he's talking. It just sprung up and it just kept going and kept going and kept going. He says that the water I give you 
is going to continue in you. I, hey, listen, I'm thankful. I've been saved for 29 years. 29 years, God has just saved my life, and he's been changing that life for the last 29 years. And listen, there's days that I woke up, and man, I felt like I was a thousand miles away from God. There's things that I've done that have made me feel like I was a thousand miles away from God. There's times in my life where I just wasn't right with God. But in all that time, there was always this living water inside of me, bubbling up, saying, hey, you're mine, and I've got a drink for you. Come over here. Hey, hey, son, sit down and drink some of this water. Amen? And man, that, that water just kept producing. Amen? And what you see after 29 years is the product of the living water, not a product of me, not a product of my work, not a product of my church, but a product of my Jesus. Amen? And he wants to do that in your life. Springing, active, productive. It was plentiful, the Bible says in verse 14. Plentiful, everlasting. That's what he used. He used the word everlasting. That means it doesn't run out. If something don't run out, I guess it's plentiful. Somebody say amen. Huh? How many of you ever had to go put gas back in your car? Huh? Boy, and right now, boy, ain't that a treat, huh? Yeah, I love that, you know. Buck 89 a gallon, up to $75 a gallon, right? I mean, it's just, it's great. Love it, right? And, and, and now you got, listen, not only got to do that, but you got to go get groceries. You got kids in the house. You got to get a lot of groceries. You got teenagers in the house. You got to get groceries every day. I mean, they don't last. They got to keep going and going and going. Can you imagine going to the grocery store one time and it's, and it's enough? Oh, man, wow. That would be great. But watch this. Everything in this life is temporal and runs out, except for the living water of Jesus Christ. Amen. What Christ offers you is day in, day out, minute after minute, second after second. Christ is saying, I want to be with you. I want to be in you, he said. He said, I'll put the well in you, the Bible said there in verse number 10 and verse number 14. The well shall be in you producing plentifully, and, and, and last, it's a purifying water. Look at what the Bible says in verse 14, everlasting life, life, where death came by sin. The Bible says the wages of sin is death. The payment for sin is death. Everything that this life touches, everything that sin touches, it turns to death and corruption and vileness and unrighteousness. But Christ says, I give life, this well, this, this person, not a place, the person, Jesus, gives this water to you today. Now last, we saw the well, we saw the water. Let's look at the woman. The Bible says in verse number 7, where was she from? A woman of Samaria. The Bible says and here that she was an outcast. In fact, in verse number 9, she made that very clear, that the Jews had no dealings with the Samaritans. In verse uh, in, in, in the previous verse, we learned that Jesus had to go through Samaria, but that, you know, typically nobody would go through, Jews wouldn't go through Samaria. She was a woman of Samaria. Who were the Samaritans? Why was she such an outcast? Back many years before this, about around 700, 720 B.C., the Assyrians came in and destroyed those northern kingdoms, the ten tribes of Israel. Remember the tribes were split. They had the northern kingdoms and their capital was Samaria. And you had the southern kingdoms, which Judah and their capital was Jerusalem. And so you had these people that were in the northern kingdoms. And when the Assyrians came and destroyed them and were leading people captive and taking them out, you had a bunch of people who stayed. Not only did they stay, but when the Assyrians inhabited the land, they started intermarrying with these Assyrians. Now, understand this is what I'm talking about. Those Assyrians were idol worshipers. They were pagans. They sacrificed humans to, to, to the, their gods. They, they were idol worshipers. And so God told his people, my people do not marry idol worshipers. Listen very carefully. God's people should not intermarry with the world's people. Amen. If, listen, our young, listen, we tell our young people, if you're saved, follow the Lord Jesus Christ, you don't go find a spouse in the world among the unbelievers. Christ says we are to marry believers because a pagan worshiper, an idol worshiper, and a worshiper of Christ have nothing in common. Amen? 
Now, now, now watch this. So to the Jewish people, they did the worst thing that they could ever do. They sold out their God. They sold out their bloodline. They sold out their history. They sold out their heritage. They sold out everything. So were they Jews? Partly. Partly they were Jews. But they had been so intermingled with the things of the world. It's a picture of how the world corrupts anything that's good. And so because of that, those Samaritans were outcasts because they allowed sin to reign in their country. And so they were, they were outcasts. Now the Bible says this woman was an outcast. She was an outcast for that reason, but also even among her own Samaritan people, she's draw, drawing water at noon in the heat of the day because she's a loner in town. She's, she's the one that all the other women say, ew, we don't want to go around her. She might take your husband. See what I'm saying? She had a horrible reputation because of her sin. She was an outcast nationally. She was an outcast among her people. She's broken. She's hurting. She, she, she feels like there's no one around. And so you know what she does? She just wants to be left alone. She goes to the well when nobody else is there. But yet inside, she's thirsty. She meets Jesus. Watch this. The Bible says she's confronted with her sin. In verse 16, 17, and 18, he, he confronts the sin, adultery and fornication. And so in order, as soon as she's confronted with her sin, boy, she don't like that. She starts to get real religious. In fact, look at what she does. She starts talking about her fathers worshiping on this mountain. Her fathers are worshiping on this mountain. What do you mean worshiping on this mountain? Well, as I, as I mentioned, you have the northern kingdoms uh, there in Samaria, and you have the southern kingdoms in Jerusalem. And so here, these people, these people made their own temple to God. They made their own temple to God. I think it was on Mount Gerizim that they made their temple to God, these Samaritans. And they built their own temple. And they said, look, we're going to wait for Messiah, and we're going to do it here. The Jews had their temple down there in Jerusalem, and they were worshiping to God there. And so now for years, hundreds of years, there's an animosity between where's the true temple? Is the true temple here uh, on this mountain, or is it there in Jerusalem? Is it in Samaria, or is it in Jerusalem? And they're constantly back and forth. She says right here, our fathers say that we ought to pray over here at this mountain. You guys say that you got to pray in Jerusalem. And so there was this battle of religions. In fact, it was so intense that, that after the Babylonian captivity, that uh, remember whenever Ezra and Nehemiah and all those folks, they, they, they go back to Jerusalem and they're rebuilding the temple again. They're rebuilding the temple. Remember that guy, Sanballat, that didn't want to have nothing to do with the temple being rebuilt? He was a Samaritan. He didn't want that temple being rebuilt. He's like, man, that temple's been destroyed now. This is the only temple now. Now our religion can take over. Constantly, back and forth. You need to pray like this. You need to pray like this. You need to pray like this. You need to do this. You need to do that. And watch this. Here's what Jesus said. Stop with the religious battles. Stop with what, with, with what this group says. Stop with what that group says. He says this. You need to worship me in spirit and in truth. My friend, listen, because you go to this place and you light a candle and you do this and you do that because you do good works over here or do good works over there or because you were baptized and because uh, your granddaddy went to this church because you're a good person and, well, this group over here says if I'm good, I get to go to heaven. And this group over here says as long as I go to church at least twice a year and take communion and offer a prayer, I'm okay. This group over here says i got to go to church every week. All of this stuff, Jesus says, forget about it. Forget about the place. It's a person, me. Forget about the religion. It's not religion. It's a relationship, me. Hey, this well is symbolic of God providing you water for life. But now Jesus comes and he's sitting on the rim of that well telling that Samaritan woman, forget about the place. The well is in front of you. I'm giving you eternal life. And if you want to go to heaven, you got to come to me, Jesus, the living water in spirit and in truth. Listen, John, uh, John, uh, or Jesus uh, told uh, Nicodemus, that religious leader, in John chapter 3, he said, look, you must be born again. That which is born of the flesh is flesh. That which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I say unto thee, you must be born again. My friend, listen, you were born once into this world. You were born into the flesh. But if you're ever going to go to heaven, you've got to be born into the Spirit of God. You've got to come by faith and say, Lord Jesus, I'm a sinner. Lord Jesus, I know I failed you, but I'm asking you that well 
to give me eternal life. Cleanse me, purify me, make me clean. And my friend, listen, when you drink of that water, you'll never thirst again. Somebody say amen. Here's what the woman learned that day. Boy, she was on guard religiously. She said, man, my fathers, they taught me how to worship. She was on guard because of her her racial background, her ethnic background. Verse number 9, watch this. Jesus says, Jesus says, give me a drink. Her first reply after that is not, you don't have anything to draw with. Her first reply is, well, I thought the Jews didn't want to have anything to do with the Samaritans, so why are you and you asking me for a drink of water? Right? I mean, she pulled out the racial deal, right? And Hey, let me tell you this. Racial tension Ethnic diversity, all this, this group against this group against this group is nothing new. Satan has used this for years. You know what's going to happen? Listen, in heaven, there is no racial or ethnic divide. Amen? And as God's people, listen, we know this around here because we're open about it, and I want to make sure that everybody understands. Listen, when Christ saves us in Revelations chapter 4, when we look into the new heaven, listen, the Bible says there is all nations, kindreds, and tongues of people. There's no racism, no ethnic diversity in heaven. Amen? We're all the same. Amen? In Jesus Christ. Down here, listen, we are different. Amen? I mean, listen, some people, listen, the color of your skin, the language you talk, the place you come from. Man, I love diversity. I, I love the fact that, man, not every tree is the same. Amen? Not every flower is the same. Not all food's the same, amen? I mean, man, I, I love me some, uh, some Spanish food. Praise God. Some German food, some Chinese food. Listen, I don't eat a lot of that stuff anymore, but whew, man, it was so good. Huh? All the Mexican stuff. I mean, I'm, it's just everything. I don't, I don't care what it is. Just lay it out, man. I, uh, Caribbean stuff. Man, I love that stuff. I love that diverse. But listen, the devil wants you to pick this group or pick that group. Pick this religion, pick that religion. Jesus says, pick me. Jesus says, here I am, pick me. Pick me. And so listen, listen, forget about where you're from. Forget about what you've done. Forget about who's standing around. Jesus is standing in front of you. And Jesus says, I'm the well. And if you'll drink of me, I'm going to put something in you that is going to last forever, that's going to bring joy, going to bring peace, going to bring cleansing, satisfaction, and bring eternal life. Remember where that place was at? Remember that well? Remember the well? The Bible says it was in between. It was in Shechem. That is directly in between Mount Ebal, which is the Mount of Curse, and Mount Gerzim, which is the Mount of Blessing. And in the middle, it's about a 500-yard valley, and in that valley is the well of Jacob. And so here's what God says. You have a choice. You either have blessing or you have curse. You either choose me and take eternal life or you choose yourself and choose your own way and have a curse. Today, God says to us, I'm right here, pick me. Let's bow our heads, close our eyes today. I I hope and pray that if you're here this morning and you've never trusted Christ as your personal Savior, if there's never been a day that you can say, Preacher, I've trusted Christ my Savior. I prayed to Jesus. I asked Jesus to save me. I'm not talking about religion. I didn't ask you if you got baptized. I'm not asking you if you have a church membership somewhere. I'm not asking you if you do good works, give money to the church. None of that stuff. I'm not, I, I quit cursing. I quit doing this. I'm not asking that. Has there been a spiritual birthday in your life that you can say, I trusted Christ as my personal Savior. Now, you might not remember the exact day. You might not remember the exact time. But right now, you're saying, Preacher, I know. I know I did. And you can kind of go back to that place and say, I know I, I prayed and I asked Jesus to save me and forgive me. If you're here this morning and you've done that, then that well is inside of you and ever flowing spring. It'll never run out. And I don't know what you're hurting with and I don't know what you're troubled by but why don't you go to Jesus and say I need your help why don't you come and just take another drink from that well and say God I need your help maybe you're here this morning 
and you say, I've never trusted Christ my Savior, then come and drink of that salvation water. Let us show you. We'll show you how to be saved. You say, well, preacher, i got some questions. Listen, the most important question you'll ever answer and deal with is, are you saved? Are you a child of God? Are you going to heaven when you die? It's very simple. You've either trusted Christ as your Savior by faith or you have not. If if you have not answered that question first, let me ask you this. Do you know you're a sinner? You say, preacher, I know I've sinned. I've said things. I've done things. I've thought things. I've... I I know I've sinned. Okay. First you admit your sin. And then you believe that Christ is that well. That Christ will forgive you. He died on the cross in your place. And he took all the punishment that would have come to you. He took it on himself. And he paid for your sin debt. So today, you need to believe that Christ is that well. Christ is the living water. And then you need to confess to Christ. Confess. Jesus, I know I'm a sinner, and I'm asking you to be my Savior. Please forgive me. And confess to him. Ask him for forgiveness. Friend, if you'll do that, admit your sin, believe in Christ, and confess your sin to him, the Bible says you'll be saved. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. But it's your choice. You're in between Mount Gerizim of blessing and Mount Ebal of curse. You, you choose. I can't choose for you. But if you'd like to, we'll pray with you. If you'd like to be saved, you just come right up here to this altar. And say, preacher, I want to be saved. Nobody's looking around. Nobody's going to. And, and I'll pray with you or I'll get somebody to pray with you. And we'll take you in a side room over here. And we'll show you with the Bible how you can be saved. Okay? Father, I love you. I love you, Jesus. Thank you for your word. Thank you that you keep your word. You keep your promises. And Lord, I ask in Jesus' name that you would speak to hearts today. And for somebody that's not saved, today would be that time that they trust you. Thank you for giving me strength to preach, Father. Lord, and thank you for the good listeners here today that listen to your word. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for keeping their attention. I love you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's stand to our feet. Nobody's looking around, please. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Please just, we're going to be dismissed in a minute. If you don't have to move around, don't move around. But if you want to come to this altar, listen, you come. God's dealing with hearts right now. God's going to deal with your heart. You need to come and drink from this water. There's a well. His name is Jesus. Jesus is Jacob's well. He's the well eternally, spiritually. And he's saying to you, come and drink. Come and drink. He that drinketh of the water that I give shall never thirst again. Friend, I'm telling you, Christ satisfies, Christ cleans, Christ forgives. No matter what you've done, where you've been, hey, Christ can forgive you, but you've got to ask. God's speaking to your heart, friend. Don't wait. Nobody's looking around. This is just you and God time, okay? I can, I can see you, but if you want to come and be saved, you come and be saved. I'll show you how to be saved. You want to come and pray? Just say, Lord, I need to take a drink of that well. I need some water. I need to refresh myself in Christ. Why don't you come? Pray. Talk to the Lord. Father, we do thank you for your blessing. And we thank you for the salvation that you give, the water that you give. Father, I ask, Lord, that you would just do a work in us. Lord, a work that is eternal. Lord, that woman, after she got saved, she went and told people, and man, they got saved. God, Lord, we want to be a help to others. Help our life to be a light. Not just about us. That life's not about complaining about what we don't have, but praising you for what we do have. Help us to be a light to others. God, and I pray you help us to live by faith and trust you. God, if there's somebody here that's not saved, God, I pray you don't let them alone. Father, I pray your Holy Spirit would continue to knock at their heart's door till they answer come to you and drink of the water of life. 
Lord, I love you. We ask you to bless the offering this morning. Lord, that you'd use it for the upbuilding of your kingdom. Bless the gift and the giver in Jesus' name. Amen. Ushers are making their way to the back, getting the offering buckets ready. You can get your offering ready, and you can toss it in the bucket on the way out. And uh, God bless you uh, for your giving there. Uh, I want to encourage you again, just one more time. If you didn't already get a card for each of our staff, please do that and uh, and bring a, bring a card, Brother Tony, Miss Jess, Brother Matt, and put it in that basket out there. Afterwards tonight, we're going to have a time of fellowship, some good food they got, a bunch of different stuff out there. You can just pick around on it and uh, just have a good time of fellowship. But come back this evening and uh, we'll, be, uh, we'll bring a different message. Get some gospel tracks. I think, Amber, you're the, you're the only one that popped in is watching. Well, you're not the only one that popped in and is watching. Um, but thank you guys for watching. As I stated in the beginning, guys, you know, time is extremely short. Life is short. And um, it's time to love and forgive others. you got families. you got husbands. you got wives. you got children. It's time to make things straight with those that you have hurt. And if you need forgiveness, to ask for forgiveness, ask forgiveness from those, you know, from those that you'd hurt. And, and if people don't forgive you, take it to God and ask Him to forgive you of the sins and wrongs you've done against others. And if others have hurt you, it's time to forgive those people. It's time to walk in love, guys, daily. It's not about the church we go to. It's not about money. It's, you know, that's what I was talking about in the beginning of the video for those that are popping in that on my Facebook that didn't start watching from the beginning see a lot of people get mad at these pastors and so and so like paul begley for asking for money and stuff but what people don't get is our bibles literally talk about giving our 10 percent, giving our tithing towards god which is not supposed to be abused by pastors as it is that's why so many do not trust pastors and churches i get that if you look at like pastors like joel olstein so many people okay in the mainstream mega church era Making millions, tri driving three, four mega planes, you know, um, big old mansions, more than one mansion, multiple planes, so on, you know, and try to be like rich snobs, rich snuffs. That's not who God is. God's love. God wants us to come to his son Christ. It's not about money. It's not about religion. It's not about church. But yes, it says, you know, as the body of Christ, we should give our 10%. If you, That's if you can afford it. But God knows a lot of people are poor. A lot of people are broke. He doesn't hold that against people. People don't die and go to hell because they didn't tithe to God. No, but the Bible talks about Steve. I believe it was a, um, a woman and her husband, Stephen. Please forgive me if I'm wrong. But they were holding back purposely against God. And God asked them, what are you trying to hide the money from me for? What are you trying to hide? In other words, you're robbing me. You're robbing God is what the scripture was saying. You know, um, oh, Danielle, you lost connection. Be safe out there, my friend. I think Amber's still in here watching with you right now, Danielle. Yeah, be safe out there, guys. A lot of people don't know we're getting hit by massive amounts of energy. Um, once again today, more Planet X system radiation energy hitting hard. It's going to amp up the storms, guys. Um, the heat, like I said, expect Mike from in, Insider Mike from around the world told told Paul Begley on Paul Begley's YouTube channel a few weeks back to expect about 165 degrees Fahrenheit weather. Okay, by the end of the summer. And as you guys can see, well, in Ohio yesterday, like, I got exhaust and heat sickness last night, guys. Um, it was literally like night. It was still about, it felt like 90 at nighttime, okay? Then yesterday in the day, it was only like 86, 87, but the news said it felt like 94 to 96. So, you guys stay hydrated. Because all this energy coming in, it deplete. It makes you not want to drink water. Okay, that's one one of the things it does. Um, the sun is amping up majorly, and that means the sun simulator that NASA patented patented back in the sixties and seventies that they use or try to align in front of the real sun to block out Planet X system bodies, along with using chemtrails. 70 different poisonous chemtrails in the sky every day to block these Planet X system bodies to go around the moon and the sun and the sky. That's why people don't see them clearly 
all the time unless you're constantly looking like me day and night in the sky going outside and people wonder why they're not seeing stuff they're just not going out looking period and that's sad that's laziness okay um but the people just go outside every evening every morning watch the sun rise notice it's 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 rising more towards the um Right now, guys, this, the sun's rising. Well, for me over here, it's been rising towards more the, um, not the north, not, well, it's been rising in, not in the east, okay? It's been rising in the northeast. And it's starting to rise more closer to the north. That's not good because that means it's getting close to the 40 degree mark. Well, they always talk about when you hit the 40 degree mark, that's when the pole shift occurs. That's completely false. What they will not tell you is, is when Planet X. Okay, we know Planet X is entering in by this September. That's according to Insider, who's a ex-intelligence officer for the Pentagon. Okay, he used to work there. He still has insiders there as friends. They told him, okay, that's why so many were confused about Planet X. That many thought it was already here, but come to find out, no, our government is tracking, I believe, four systems, four planetary systems, okay? So... The Planet X system, along with three other systems, we have problems, guys. We have two, what I found, a large and a small Planet X system body behind Earth. They're shooting cosmic waves of radiation at us, hitting the backside of the Earth. We have solar radiation because Planet X system bodies are perturbing the sun daily. So that cosmic or, or solar radiation from the sun and pure energy is hitting, hitting the Earth. Not including we have a magnetar, as Insider Mike stated, behind the Earth with these two other Planet X system bodies behind Earth. It's shooting these cosmic waves of radiation. And then we got, I believe, what Mike talked about, the five waves of energy that he warned Paul Begley about years ago. It started hitting years back after Paul, after Mike warned. And then the mainstream media came out and said, oh yeah, this, uh, this, these pulses of energy are coming in. Exactly what Mike said. Okay, so he's been dead on with everything, not including the... CV19 that Mike uh, told Paul about a year in advance before it ever came because they planned it long ago. That's all I'll say about that, as most know. <laughs> um, I don't want to get the video pulled. So, um, yeah, when Mike said about the five ways of, of energy, that's coming from a gamma ray burst. That's also the other energy coming in. That's the same energy that hit on the day that um, La Palma volcano blew. That they're actually still very worried about, but yet our government downplayed it. Say, it said, "Oh, don't worry about La Palma." Even though there was a massive chance, it still is that a massive piece could break off off the La Palma uh, Spanish coast over there, up by Africa, not too far, and it could big clump the size of Rhode Island could clip off the uh, La Palma Island. And um, especially since, you know, it never died, okay, there's tons of lava still filling underneath La Palma, but yet the mainstream media will now tell people this. They don't tell people that there's volcanoes blowing globally and um, internationally, you know. Yeah, Danielle, stay safe. Sorry, guys, I just, I'm just now reading more of your messages. Be safe out there, Danielle. And um, I hope if you're, I know, I know you're married, hopefully you and your husband, hopefully he's smart and... Um, Got you a bunch of candles, you know, and a, I would say a backup generator. I mean, I told my dad to get one years ago. He never did, sadly, but um, he always got to improvise, right? Candles, the number one thing. Lots of get lots of lighter fluid, liquid, so on. Make sure you guys stay safe out there and stay hydrated, Danielle. Everybody watching this or that's gonna watch this, stay hydrated. Get plenty of water in you. Um, but yeah, as, as I was saying about La Palma, you know, with all the, that day that La Palma blew, a red band wave came in, okay, that hit from this one of these gamma gamma ray bursts. And so, according to Mike, Insider Mike, the government is watching these waves of energy coming in from a gamma ray burst, which was a star. This is what it is by definition, a star. Mike said, I'm not sure of the full details. That exploded thousands of years ago. That just happened to be in our direction. And no, I don't find that coincidental or accident. Okay? So we have a bunch more waves coming in from that. Um, if you look at the actual graphs. The, you know what? I'm going to show you guys that right now while I'm here. Hold on. I'm going to show you guys that right now. We're going to check out the energy, guys. Hitting the planet right now. Coming from the sun's direction. Which I believe um, the energy coming from these gamma ray burst waves. Which are called red band waves. According to Mike. Um, these red band waves, the, the smaller ones, I guess, leave a bigger impact on Earth, which can cause massive quakes, 
volcanic activity. So all this energy coming in from the cosmic radiation, from these five waves of energy from this exploded star, and the solar radiation and energy, and the planet X system radiation and energy from the backside of Earth hitting us. So we're getting slammed on both back and front sides, or night and daytime sides, sides of Earth, guys, okay? And, well, you can imagine, I show you guys all the time the symptoms... What it does to your body, it can make you extremely sick, make you very ill, that's why everybody's getting massive headaches, that's why so many people are going to the hospitals with their blood pressure raised up, um, heart attacks are sk skyping through the roof due to this fact, um, skin cancers are through the roof, yet they're hiding that from the people due to all the solar radiation coming in and the planet X system energy and radiation, um, a lot of things are going on. It can make you sick, make you have vivid dreams, but we know that's not always the case. Sometimes Jesus Christ will, especially lately, will give us dreams and visions. Right, Daniel? Amber, I know you're still here. Throughout all my years of multiple dreams from Christ, and I know they weren't all from Christ, but yes, many were from Christ, multiple of them. You know, um, rapture, antichrist dreams, fireball, planet X system dreams, rapture dreams. Seeing Christ in a dream, seeing how he looked as Revelation chapter 1 states his face or his countenance is as the sun. And I could tell you that. Imagine putting 10 white suns over his face. When people clinically die, brain and heart dead, they tell you the same exact thing. That when they see uh, Jesus they, or Yeshua, call him what you will. He's got many names. Um, when they see him, they say, they say he's so bright. That's exactly what see. It wasn't so much his body was light, it was all coming from his face, as if he took ten white fake suns and put it over his face, but as people describe in death, but you can look at him. That's how he looks. As Revelation chapter 1 states, it says Christ's face is as the, or his countenance, his face or facial feature or appearance is as the sun, but you can look at him. He's the most beautiful peop person, most beautiful being, human, human and God, period, in the flesh, that you will ever see. So hold on, guys. Let me show you the energy coming in right now. Hold on. Give me one second, guys. One second. Okay. I found it. I found it quick. So I, I did not want this video to be too long, but you know how that goes, right? With me. I like to ramble on and on. Hold on, let me try it up. See, guys, I'm I'm kind of a goofball. I got like a bunch of clothes on the floor, and I'm trying to prop up the um, the telephone, and I'm on my knees trying to point towards it so you guys can have a good figure. Okay, so this is this is um, anybody ever want to go to it? Look look at it for themselves. You go to hold on. Yeah, okay. There, there's my phone. I broke. I think I mentioned that by about. A week ago or a few days back. So I got to use other backup phones now, okay? Because I dropped this one when I was outside the other night. Right in the ground. It cracked my phone all, newer phone all up. And um, it still works. But um, it's a bummer because that's where I, you know, make most of my YouTube videos from. But I still do it. Okay, this is swpc.noaa.gov. Uh, yeah, not gov dot gov slash what the heck yeah by the way webcam photo webcam that's a good place to find planet x system bodies as you're seeing it anyways i'll i might leave a link to that later hold on okay so back to it it's it's Noah.gov. Just go to Noah.gov and or just go to Google type in geospace magnetosphere movies. Okay, the first one we're gonna look at, guys, is the velocity. If you both can hear me. I know you're in here, Amber. I know you're not saying nothing. I saw you pop in. I know you're here, you're not a ghost. So hold on. You ready, Danielle? Let's check out the velocity of what's hitting us, okay? Now you guys see that it's small black and white oh wow i can actually zoom in on live stream i have, i've never known this i'm stupid but 
you can actually live, well, zoom in on live stream. I've never zoomed in on live stream other than on YouTube, and I used to do it until they pulled my live streams. And, you know, like I told others, I'm not sure I can live stream on YouTube anymore. If I can, maybe I start will again, but you got to watch what you say on there majorly now. It's even worse. So, yeah, the little, where's that? The black and white thing, okay? There's a big white circle, then there's a circle within the white circle. It's black and white. The white side represents daytime side of Earth, and the dark side represents the nighttime side. There's the equatorial plane above, as you see. But forget about all the numbers, okay? Now, the colors. Um, obviously, the red's going to be higher energy, especially like orange, so on, so on. Then you get to like that. I don't believe that's higher, the bluish, yellowish, no. It's like, you see this blood red guy's hitting? Okay, let me give you a better, I'm going to show you this one first, but let's just see what's going on today. Let's see if we got a bunch of solar energy hitting, okay? Hold on. I'm try to set it up easier for me. Hold on. Powering off. That was my speaker that I had my Bluetooth connected to. It's powering off. Okay, go to sleep. Stupid thing. <laughs> Hold on. Hold on. I need to get comfy. It's so hard getting comfy in this place, I'll tell you that. Alright, sorry it's a little shaky. Alright, now let's look at it. Let's go back. All right, you see it? Now, the sun's to the far left, guys. The sun's over here, the left side. You cannot see the sun. But you see massive energy slamming our bow shock. Our bow shock's this curvy thing right here all the way around, okay? We've been getting so much energy hitting us from the Planet X system and from another source of energy coming from the sun's direction, which I happen to believe that's the some of the waves of energy Mike was talking about from this gamma ray burst. It's literally been breaking our bow shock. It's been bending it, breaking it in half. We have no protection. Now, see back here, guys, there's, there's a smaller Planet X system body exactly where that dark green is, and there's a large one all the way back here. You cannot see it. Okay, that are shoot the shooting energy from right to left, you know, from the back side to the back side of Earth, and then solar energy hitting us from the left. Okay, here we go again. Now you see it hitting. Now look at it. It's pushing. It's pushing from behind. It's coming up right here, and it's pushing from back to front boom and it looks like yeah it looks like actually i don't know which way that's coming from right there though hold on give me a second we're gonna check out the density okay let's look at the density really quick check out how things are going yeah everybody's getting sick from this guy's headaches vomiting um yes cancer can be caused big time by this you know skin cancer is majorly up from this radiation coming in all this energy is building up in the atmosphere. It's, you know, it's not in the atmosphere, in the ionosphere. And it's making our atmosphere very charged up. Causing massive storms globally. Causing chaos globally. Um, that's why the animals are feeling it. They're acting different. They're dying off. They're confused. They don't know which way to go direction-wise. And they're also getting radiated as we are, too. Humans, we're getting... People are walking around with radiation sickness and have no clue, guys. Okay, so that's not good. See, other YouTube channels can explain this better, like the different meridian lines, stuff like that. But as you can see, there's a bunch of energy, boom, hitting from the backside again. You can see the blue coming up, pushing from the back. And then pushing from the sun's way, that you know, from the left to the right, and then back to the left. Now, here's what's really going to show you the radiation, okay? This would be the pressure. Look at the pressure hit now. You see all that red, guys? That's all the red that's infiltrating this black and white circle, which is Earth, okay? Meaning all that energy coming in is infiltrating the atmosphere or the ionosphere, charging it up, causing storms to go chaotic. It's also the energy soaking in the soil. The Bible says in the last days at hell... 
would enlarge itself. That's what it says. That's exactly what's happening to earth. Hell is swelling. The core of the earth is swelling. That's what it's doing. And it's pushing lava, magma up. That's why you see places like Indonesia right now with bubbling coming out of trees, out of the ground, smoke coming out of trees. Um, Saudi Arabia, stuff's bubbling up from the desert. And New York, Hudson River, the wa water is bubbling in the river. Okay, many don't know on the whole East Coast. There are three that I know of. They call dormant or dead volcanoes or extinct. That's bullcrap because, yes, they can fill back up with volcano um, magma and plasma or plasma magma and lava quite quick, guys. Okay, and the whole east coast is getting shaken by quakes. That's why I keep telling people get off the coast, you know, especially with what's coming. You know, um, I don't believe Christians are going to be here for the pole shift. I really don't because Christ said he'd keep us from or from out of, ek, ek in Greek, out of the hour of trial, testing, tribulation of seven years that should come upon the whole world to try them, who's them, to try unbelievers, those who reject Christ as Lord at the time and before the time of the rapture, those who dwell on the earth, the earth, the face of the earth, okay? Let's see what's going on here, guys. You see it? Is it even playing? What the heck? Sorry about that. You're going to see it. You're going to see this energy hitting and how much radiation is. Look at this. Looks like we're getting bombarded with this radiation, right? And you can see the actual energy hitting from the backside, too, to the back of Earth. Boom. Look at it. It's like it's hitting from right. You can see it actually push from back here and hit there. And you can see this way getting hit, too. Both sides are getting hit with energy right now. See, that's hitting pretty good. Hold on, I'll check out one more thing before I let you guys go, because I've recorded long enough. Give me a second. Um, You know what? I'm going to show you something here. I'm going to show you why the sun's been acting the way it is, okay? Hold on, give me a second. got to get comfy. Comfy, comfy, comfy! <laughs> All right. All right, Daniel, I know you're still hanging on with me. I appreciate you're the one person sticking here. Um, hold on. I know what happens, though. Usually when I end the video, a bunch of people... See, a lot of people don't like coming in and hearing truth. That's one thing. Another thing is people do, do not like live videos for some reason, you know. Which I understand, you know, they're doing... People are doing stuff. Today is Sunday. And, um... People got family and loved ones, husbands and wives, stuff to do. And I get that, you know, so people can always replay, go back to the beginning. But, all right, we're going to check this out, okay? Me and you, Danielle, since you're in here. Anybody ever want to look up Planet X system bodies, you go to Stereo Ahead Images, okay? Or you can just go to, uh, I'm on Google, type in Live Sechi. NASA footage or live Soho NASA footage. Now, I'm going on a different site. This is completely different than the regular site I go to. It's kind of harder to find, but it's um, got good evidence, you know. Let's go to a head. Excuse me, a head core 2. I can go to a head core 2 or a head core 2 RD, all right? We're going to go to RD. We're going to go to the dates. Um, give me a second. Give me one second. 2022, starting at August 1st, Danielle, you still here with me? August 1st, all the way until today's date of August 7th, okay? Oh. Sorry, it's kind of crap because the other phone's broken, look them. <laughs> 2022, 8 one 22 to 8 7 22. All right, as far as the dates, and you type in how many images you want. If anybody ever goes here, type in one image per, you know, because these, these are pictures that NASA puts together as a video, all right? Now let's see what's been passing by the sun. I already know. I just want to show you guys, okay? Hold on. So this will actually save me time from posting it in a different video, okay? Let me go. Hold on. 
Watch all the different Planet X system bodies passing the sun. Watch. Hold on. I'm going to slow them down to show you. There's a there's one, a big one. There's a big one. That's a massive flare or a coronal mass ejection that was on the first. Okay. Hold on. Let me try to find a good picture for you. I'm going to try to stop it when they come by, okay? Oh, you see that? Watch, Daniel. Watch this if you're still here. Whoever's in here. You ready? The date is 8-2-2022. Go a step, few steps back, okay? Watch. You're going to see a copy pop up first. When these objects pass, sometimes they leave copies of themselves, refractions of themselves, if, if you want to call it that, on these um, NASA cameras looking at the sun. Again, that's th this whole black thing is not the sun, okay? This white circle and what's in the white circle is the size of our sun. This black thing around is called the occulter. That's what they put um, on for these cameras. They put them over the sun to actually look at, you know, CMEs, solar flares, so on, um, coronal mass ejections, if I say CME, that's what that means, okay, so let's go back, let's see what passes sun, it's a mighty big planet X system body, you see it, let me try to, hold on, give me a second, there we go, you see it, right there, very massive Planet X system body passing the sun, as you can clearly see it. Okay, let's do a step back. Notice it's gone, right? Right, step forward, do it again. Hold on, watch, I'll show you. Bingo. It's a massive Planet X system body. All right, we're going to look for more, whoever's in here. We're going to find some more real quick, all right? Hold on. I got to try to catch it really fast. Oh, hold on. Here we go. There's another one. This is on 8-3, and you guys wonder why we're having constant solar flares every day and coronal mass ejections, earth-facing. Well, here's the reason why. There's another one, mighty large, okay, here's the size of Earth, that little circle, the white circle inside the black thing, and there's this object. These are different objects, okay, these are not the same thing, these are huge. And this is why Jesus said men's hearts would fail them from fear for the expectation of those things coming to pass upon the earth, and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. And then they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds with power and great glory. When you see these things come to pass, Jesus said, Daniel, if you're still in here, he told us to rejoice, to not fear, to not be frightened, but to rejoice, to edify, meaning build up, instruct, and lift up one another, because as, as you see the day approaching, to lift up brothers and sisters in Christ. You know, that's what life's about. It's about lifting up and loving, forgiving, because God's love and He's light. That's what we should be doing daily, okay? Hold on. Now, this is interesting. Watch this. Oh, a little bit too far. Too far. Too. Oh, look at this. This is very interesting, right? Now, sometimes it could be a whole bunch of crap passing the sun. Other times it's really just one of these things with multiple lights. And, um, hey, what's going on, Marilyn? Mar Marilyn uh, Goodell? 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 Goodell or Goodell? Good day, Marilyn Goodell. <laughs> Sorry, I don't know how to pronounce it, but um, usually these things you see right here. The refractions, a lot of, uh, they'll actually show the sun's being eclipsed at this time. They'll actually make like a bunch of copy prints, okay, of the sun being eclipsed. It looks like a half the eclipse sun, um, showing multiple times on here. Or it could just be a smaller object 
being refracted on the camera with multiple things. Okay, now here's a Planet X system meteor comet body that's separate from all this crap. And then there's another one right there. Mighty big comet, large type object. Um, we're looking at from A322. Quite, it's very, very simple, guys, to find this information. Okay, we're going to keep going. Maryland for a minute, and then I'm going to close out. Hold on. Give me a second. I'm trying to, trying to be fast here, stopping these pictures. Ooh, did you see that? Hold on. There we go. It is from 8 4 1753 which would be, I believe, military time. I keep thinking military time. If it is, um, probably, probably, somebody will probably say UTC, UTC time, but I say military time. Um, if it is military time, to, you know, you just take the number that's in front and you subtract, or subtract 12 from it. So that'd be 13, 14, 15, that'd be 553. Um, timing, okay, I'm probably wrong on it, it's probably UTC, I'm going by military time, but see the large Planet X system body right there passing again, and just because they show them this close, guys, on the camera, um, they're not always that close, okay, they could, they could be thousands and thousands and thousands of miles away, but they're big enough to be showing up on these cameras, and there's this, which I have no idea, um, Maybe that's just a refraction of that passing, and that's something completely different. It could be some um, UFO thing, could be a NASA thing, I'm not sure. But up here is a large Planet X system body, okay? Let's keep going. Oops, hold on. Oh, I guess that was the end of that. Let me check one more thing, and then I'm going to be logging off here, because I do not, I did not want to make a long video, guys. I do apologize, and I'm tired. Need me another cup of coffee. <laughs> Hold on, we're going to go to a head, stereo head H1, okay? Let me show you guys this. Hold on. Is it still showing? Yep, it is still showing. Hold on. Okay, let me see if I can get a better view for you guys, okay? Let me try to stop. All right. Many of you probably will not be able to see this, but... Okay, this is our planet. These things connected to the lines. This, I believe that's Mercury or Venus. Get me, it might be Jupiter, but I keep thinking Mercury or Venus, all right? The sun is over here to the left. You cannot see the sun. You see the rays shooting right from the solar rays, okay? Now, this massive Planet X system body, that's not a refraction, it's not a reflection, it's an actual Planet X system body, um, it's right here. You can actually see the circle of it. Um, I'm not sure if you can see that, Marilyn, or not. There's a massive Planet X system body, I'm talking massive, Sitting right, it's not directly behind our own planets, which would be these, okay, connected to the lines. But, uh, wait a minute. What is that? What is that? It's a, it looks like a whole other Planet X system object that might possibly be with this, um, massive thing right here, Okay. You can perfectly see it in a circle. I've, I've shared actual clear pictures of it. Hold on, I'll show you an actual clear picture of it, whoever's still watching. Give me a second. Give me one second. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to actually go to my Facebook page. It's going to be a little odd here. 
I'm going to go to my Facebook page, Marilyn, and try to show you, since I believe you're the only one popped in here, I'm going to try to show you that big, large object that's actually cleaned up what I just showed you on the live um, footage that I just showed you a second ago from NASA, okay? Public, it's public footage. Anybody can look at it. All right, we're going to go down my timeline. You can tell, guys, look, I'm live right now. Holy smokes. Live um, footage that I just showed you a second ago from NASA, okay? Public now that was all. <laughs> I feel like Paul Begley there now. He always does this, this um, which drives a lot of people nuts. He'll, he'll say something, then he'll get an echo on his um, computer, you know, and he'll keep playing it over and over and over. So it drives some people nuts, but that's that's Pastor Paul Beckley. So I want to show you show you this, Marilyn, if you're still here. Hold on. Let on my pose. Reese's Reese's cups. I love them. Ain't nothing like Reese's cups. Okay. Let me try to find it. And oh, and since I'm here, this is gonna save me a bunch of time from not having to pose. Um, other extra video. Something is making the Earth spin faster in our days shorter. Well, they said it's off by, um, what they say it's off by? Multiple kiloseconds? Uh, me and my, well, I noticed a long time ago, like the past few months, I've been telling my parents, my mom and dad have been noticing too, like the time is just flying by. Well, they know that planet, well, our planet Earth is in a partial wobble right now. As Insider Mike from around the world just told Paul Begley this about a few weeks back. We're actually in a, now a partial wobble. The moon is off 180 degrees in a tilt because of the planet X system affecting not just our Earth, but the moon and affecting the sun. Affecting our whole solar system. That's what these people pushing the lies like Al Gore and all these other pushing that is man-made global global warming, what they don't tell you is that every single planet is going through global warming or global cooling weather extremes right now due to the planet X system that's been here since 2004 to 2007, okay? Bible prophecy is playing out right now, as you guys saw this. Uh, many on my Facebook, a bunch of rockets were just getting shot over at Israel and Jerusalem, all the world leaders are aligning together. Russia's getting together with Turkey. They're getting together with North Korea. North Korea is now offering 100,000 troops um, to Russia to help fight against Ukraine. The Bible speaks about that, about the kings from the east, which would, would be the um, China's military mixed in with North Korea. It says 200,000 thousand would cross the, the dry river Euphrates, okay? Um which I believe is during the seven years of judgment, the seven year tribulation when Christians are already gone. And, um, well, you see what our U.S. Milita military is now doing. They are now doing drills, yeah. literally, with our U.S. military. And my brother's a high colonel um, in the mil military. I'm not going to say who he is. He's a high military guy, and he's been doing a lot of training, but he sadly will not tell me and my family what he's been training for. Okay, but um, I know from others what they are training for around not just the United States, but globally. So, um, here's the U.S., South Korea. They're doing war games again. They're going after and in for the jugular against him because this is Kim Jong-un. All right, his father was Kim Jong-il, a very disgusting dictator, murderer, serial killer. You want to tell him that, that, that um, st starved his own people, put all of his own people who didn't want to bow and worship his image, kind of like how the Antichrist is going to be when he steps into power. Kim Jong-il, which is this guy, Kim Jong-un's father, this is his Kim Jong-il's son that's leading North Korea now, <laughs> Um, his This guy right here, his father, that was horrible, would put people in camps. They'd starve them to death. I'm talking working like 20-hour days. Okay, only on half a bowl of rice to a bowl of rice. Okay. Um, they liter literally starved the people over there. The same's going on in China right now with the so-on-so called quarantine camps. Yeah. More like death camps, it says over here. We have 800-plus FEMA camps that have been f set up. Um, hundreds of Walmarts that were... 
translated and transferred into DHS command centers or completely emptied out for when the time comes the Antichrist rises up and he has the United Nations that's going to be behind him. He's going to have a FEMA provisional government as insider Larry Nichols stated. The Antichrist is coming back to return, not only to United States, but global power. As I've seen in multiple dreams, and as others have seen in dreams and visions globally. I don't need to say who, I've already said it a million times. The same man that ex-elites, or even those that are still elite, even tell you is coming back into power. Even the same Antichrist that Michelle Bachman said would return. The same Antichrist that our other congressmen and congresswomen are saying is coming back to take full power. The same one, the Antichrist, that the 17th century Hadith in Islam speaks of. Okay, that is to return with the strongest army on earth. I'll leave it at that. All right, Marilyn, I hope you have a good day. Um, God bless you, and thank you for coming and popping in, okay? Let me try to find this. Here's uh, one of my newest catches of the Red Planet X system body, as you guys already saw. You see the red dust coming off the object. Somebody asked me, and um forgot on one of my videos, why can you see stars through, through some of them? Well, a lot of them are just like the object shadow, okay? Other times it's not. They'll show their shadows as sometimes even red, but not fully red like this where you can't see through it, okay? Some Planet X system bodies, they leave their shadows on the cameras, okay? But they'll leave their, you can tell they're not bugs or nothing like that because they'll actually leave their, um, their reflection on the water. But they don't always leave the, refle ref uh, the reflections on the waters, guys, so please do know that. They do not always do that, okay? You can tell they're not bugs or nothing like that because they'll actually leave their, um, their reflection yeah. on the water. Don't want to watch myself. That's not what I was planning. Sorry about that. This is what's going on. This is when, uh, Pelosi... When Nancy Pelosi went over to Taiwan, they started shooting off missiles, which, by the way, now now uh, China's shooting missiles over Taiwan, and they're shooting missiles already in the you know J Japan's economic zone where their fishing and shipping is going on. Very bad news, guys. Extremely bad news. Okay, and it's Bible prophecy. I told my parents years ago. I said, "Watch, because the Bible talks about during the seven years of fake peace that the anti Antichrist will oversee the seven year false peace treaty between Israel and Palestine. It'll be a false peace deal for seven years, and the world, um, you know, the world will say peace and peace, peace and safety, so on, right? But the Bible says when they say peace and safety, then sudden destruction shall come upon them as woman with child. We know at the seven years, excuse me, at seven years of tribulation or judgment, that God's wrath on earth, at the three and a half mark, year, at, the, at the three and a half mark year point of the seven years of tribulation, we know in the Bible that Russia will invade, um, will actually invade Israel, breaking that fake seven-year peace contract that the Antichrist will oversee, okay? And we know Donald Trump helped set it up, but Donald Trump is not the Antichrist, okay? Not one person has seen Tr Trump in any Antichrist dream or vision. And if you guys just go and look up Antichrist dreams or visions on YouTube, you'll see thousands of videos showing who the Antichrist is. And for those that say, oh, they don't want to believe anything about that, for all of us, who have warned for years, and I have given physical evidence, not including Islam's own prophecy, which, by the way, our biblical Antichrist is the Islamic, their Islamic Savior, their Islamic Mahdi, their Messiah, okay? So anybody can look up Antichrist dreams and visions, and it gets me so upset that people will reject 
what thousands are all saying, all saying globally, and people will be like, oh, just because thousands are saying it. No, the Bible said in Acts chapter 2 and Joel chapter 2 that God would pour out a spirit upon all flesh in the last days that your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, your old men shall dream dreams, and your young men shall see visions in the last days, and that God would pour out a spirit upon his handmaids and his hand servants in the last days. Now, if you reject that truth, you might as well close your Bible, okay, because thousands around the world are warning you guys what they're seeing coming. They're seeing like me, like I've had seven fireball dreams. They're telling you by the millions globally, millions. This is also why, um, you know, go on YouTube, look up tsunami dreams and visions, look up antichrist dreams and visions, look up rapture dreams and visions, fireball dreams and visions, uh, two moons or planet X dreams and visions, Nibiru dreams and visions, seeing Jesus dreams and visions, seeing Jesus and NDEs, Jesus NDEs, heaven and hell NDEs, which are near-death experiences. That's what they are. You're clinically brain and heart dead. That's what clinical death is when your brain goes and not just your heart, even though people can still leave their body even while being in a coma. Okay, this is reality. This is a fact that we don't talk about Sally in our churches today because people just want to talk about feel-good stuff. Hold on here. I'm trying to get to the, uh, sorry, I got caught up. I'm trying to find that picture, okay? Yeah, I'm not even going to talk about this guy on, um, on, on YouTube when I post my video. Because you already know my thoughts about him, okay? Biggest farm owner in America. Many don't know that. He's growing all your guys' McDonald's potatoes. He owns the most farmland. He's stolen the most farmland. And um, just all I got to say is don't trust what you eat, okay? I'm going to leave it at that. All right. Here's some other captures by me. A few of you have seen it. Others have not. Red Planet X. Massive Planet X system body caught by me. I'm caught over European sky cameras again. I'm in Ohio, USA, but I look at global sky cams and not including my own evidence I, I find from outside my own place. And I share friends' footage, you know, on um, YouTube. Globally, people I don't know, people I do know. Here's the path that Dr. Robert Harrington gave of Planet X. That's the, right here is the green path. I wrote, hold on, wait a minute. Pioneer 18 was in this direction, okay, back in the day, a while ago. They went out looking for it. Um, the green is the area that two astrophysicists at the University of Louisiana, Lafayette, say they found evidence of a new planet, as well as the UK astronomers also indicated the same region in space, which is the greenish area, be right here. This is also the area of Dr. Uh, wait a minute, no, the blue area, okay, you see the blue, because planet X goes in a, this type of orbit, right, it's not regular orbit, the blue, as you see, is, came out from Dr. Robert S. Harrington, who died suspiciously, was the head observatory, I believe at the, um, I keep thinking the, okay, U.S. Naval Observatory, the other guy, Percy Lowell was at the Lowell Observatory. I keep forgetting if he died or not, but um, Robert, Robert Harrington, Dr. Harrington, which they call the Green Planet right here. They call it Dr. Well, they don't call it Dr. Harrington, okay? They call it Planet Harrington. It's a very large green planet existent body, okay? Um, that's not how actual Nibiru looks. Nibiru is cut up into chunks and into pieces, it's missing a large piece. It's traveling with moons. It's got all their parts like Tiamat, so on, so on. Um, it's traveling around the sun, around the earth and planet. Okay. Got Ferrata here, named after Carlos Ferrata. Anybody want to look up Carlos Ferrata? F-E-R-A-A. -A. Um, wait a minute. F-E-R-R-A-D-A, -A, I believe. Carlos Ferrata. Planet X, look that up on YouTube. You'll, it's going to be hard to find, so you got to keep scrolling down. He was a um, guy looking up in the space back in the 40s who had actually predicted a massive quake to come, I believe from a vision he had. He was very smart with Planet X system information. He was actually way before Dr. Robert S. Harrington. There's our Boda, which is a purple Planet X system body. There's gaseous planet Helion. 
okay? And there's tons of moons that are connected to these objects, and there's multiple comet asteroid-like bodies that are with these objects, and there are millions of debris in Planet X's debris tail, okay, that are coming. Um, sorry, guys, this phone's getting ready to die, so I'm going to have to cut it in a second, but um, I was looking for the actual a Planet X system body that was clearly, you could clearly see what I showed in the beginning, this large Planet X system body that's not too far from our sun, okay, um... So if this cuts off, I do apologize. Yeah, my goofy videos I make, right? <laughs> yeah, I like making funny videos. Hold on. What am I saying here? That's how I feel about that one, right? So <laughs> I feel about YouTube censorship. Here you go again. I'm about to cut this video, guys, because my phone's going to die. There you go, large red planet X system body. Um, wait a minute, hold on, how much... Wait a minute, oh my gosh, I'm going to cut off, I'm going to cut off. I'm going to let you guys go, God bless. And uh, read in my pinned comment section to my subs and anybody new to my channel. If you're on Facebook, read my notes to see how to accept Christ as Lord. It just takes faith, okay, and calling on the name of the Lord. And um, if you're on YouTube, read my pinned comments in my comment section with the pin my notes to see 